Hi, thank you guys so much for taking your time to chat with me. Uh, Kia, can you talk a little bit about why uh, Denise is so concerned maybe with having Franklin and Irene move out? What is it that motivates her to try to push for that rather than sort of <laughs> offer a comforting with everything that she feels is odd going on? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think she has her hands um, in a lot of different pots. So I think that she is really uh, ultimately concerned because I think that she realized that she might not be able to help um, much. You know, she's trying to graduate and finish grad school. She's got this crazy internship that she's being um, kind of offered this like next level position that's not just an internship but it's actually like a managerial position or something really intense so I think that she is ultimately just realizing that what their needs might be or ones that she can't really give unless she kind of gives everything up and 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 moves back or you know what have you and I I think that that's a worry that a lot of people have all, all over the U.S., all over the world, but uh, a time when they realize that their grandparents' parents might be a little bit incapable and like, what's that next step? So for me, I also think she's just super young and she doesn't have a home that they can move into or um, necessarily parents that are close, of course, to help her with that. So she might also get a little intense and realize like, I can't do this anymore. But you know, maybe when if she were older, more established, she'd have a couple more options in her uh, tool belt to figure that out. But being as young as she is, um, I think she's just trying her best. <laughs> I do truly love the bond that she shares with the two of them. What kind of backstory were you given about their relationship? Yeah. Um, I wasn't given a, a terrible amount. I, I did know that my um, father um, took his life um, when I was a, quite a young child. Um, and then my mother shortly remarried um, within that after a couple of years. And so I was kind of picturing, at least for me, you know, Denise was raised by a very independent Black woman who kind of gave her all of the tax uh, tactics needed to kind of um, be confident in white spaces and, and um, hold herself high and, you know, take care of herself. So when I was creating the character, you know, I made sure that her hair was always done. I, I thought that was something that Denise would always do and that her mother always told her, um, you know, she was very uh, short, kind of quick with her thoughts and her sentences. She really wanted to get her point across very quickly because she knew what she wants. Um, and, you know, she loves her grandparents like really, 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 really deeply because they're kind of all she's got. And her mom ended up moving far away to California to kind of continue this new life a little bit without her, a little bit with her. She has new kids now. So I, I kind of envisioned this woman who, Denise, that is someone who had to kind of grow up fast, grow up hot, um, but kind of do so uh, by herself um, and well. And you know, she's kind of succeeding in life. So I, I there was a lot of uh, some context clues I kind of took, but I also kind of just in, envisioned a human in which, you know, you know, I, if that were me, I'd probably be a lot messier and a, a lot unable to kind of <laughs> deal with it all. But somehow Denise does. So it was, I had to justify that a lot. Like, well, so how is she going to grad school and all this stuff? Well, you know, maybe she's an overachiever because she likes that validation that she receives from an academic standpoint that she isn't necessarily receiving in her home life. So I, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a combination of, of the two. I am really interested. I'm dying to know actually how Jude was originally described to you and sort of what were you told about the mystery that surrounds him? Um, so when I auditioned for, for Jude, I didn't know anything about him. Um, I, I mean, I, so I read, I read the first couple of episodes on the, the script and I still didn't know anything about him. <laughs> so in the audition, I just kind of made it up and just went on my own kind of tangent. And I think they uh, liked it because <laughs> they ended up casting me. Um, but uh, during pre-production, when I got told that I got the job, uh, they gave us the entire script. Um, and and, and uh, that's kind of where I knew where to kind of go with, uh, with, with my character and what, what kind of direction. And then, I mean, I still had so many questions and we had meetings after meetings about um, Jude's origins. 
uh, which was super important. And I'm so, so grateful. I, even with that, it was still kind of ambiguous uh, on where, where he came from, you know, cause it, it's, I mean, that's a whole civilization that I, I don't know if I could even talk about it. It's a, uh, it's, it's, my character's hard to describe without kind of talking about the spoilers. There's so much, um, yeah, there's so much there. But, it, you know, it's what's great about the show is that each episode you kind of find out more and more about him. And, um, and, and, and I think it's going to really um, keep the audience invested. Well, there's kind of like a fine line to him between um, a connection he shares with Irene and, and uh, Franklin and uh, sort of a menace, a menacing <laughs> aspect to him. What kind of fine line did they have you or at least tell you about that because there is a mystery to them. At least they feel like they're not sure whether he's there to help or harm. Mm. Well, actually, I just thought of something that um, I I've completely forgot about for the longest time. It, when I um, when I first was approaching the character, I actually wanted to have some kind of uh, what's the word? Wait, it's not relation, but it's like a similarities between my character and their son, which is um, uh, uh, Denise's father. And because essentially, you know, Jude's a kind of like a, a, a surrogate son, you know, in, in some regards. Um, he just kind of popped up out of nowhere in this chamber that kind of, you know, is a metaphor for giving birth, you know, it, it's, it's um, yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of um, stuff to work with there that I wanted to kind of, from reading the scripts, I wanted to kind of make some kind of relation or similarities between Jude and, and um, uh, Michael. Uh, so yeah, that, 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 was, that was an approach, that was an angle kind of that I wanted to, to take. But um, sorry, what was the, the question again? I'm, I, I go on a. I, I what kind of uh, what kind of advice did the directors offer you between walking the fine line between menacing and sort of uh, help? Oh, uh, that's when right. It comes so I I actually we were toying with the idea of being completely menacing and then you know drawing it back, um, but I didn't. Uh, it was tough because you don't want to it's very easy to go one side of the of the you know fall either side of the spectrum or, or, or the fence i kind of wanted to keep it as much in the middle as possible and just let the audience kind of um take what they will from from watching him sometimes you know what you you can do which is like uh the most effective thing is just um stillness you know, uh, stillness and 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 being present and holding back uh, the thoughts, not not the thoughts, but holding back everything that you're thinking, and um, and and the audience will just take what they will from it. There's there's a, there's a lot of profound stuff that comes from just being still. So that was kind of what I was toying with a lot. Well, Kia, there's a great intensity, but also a lot of intrigue to this series. What do you think it is that it's going to catch fans and really keep them on the edge of their seat about Night Sky? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I, I think there's a lot of interpersonal drama that happens and you kind of wonder what choices each character is going to make, given that they have received more information about either the sci-fi or a little bit in Denise's case, she's a bit of a straight man for, for a while. So I think there's like that kind of fun element of well, what are they going to do and of course who is Chai's character but um ultimately I mean the most fun part of that is is what are the portals um and I think that audiences will be surprised at um kind of what the portals are capable of and um, um what each character then does once they know or don't know about the portal and um that's at least what kept me coming back when I was reading it. Um, I was just like, well, where possibly could this lead? And then something would be revealed and I would just be 
mind blown. And I would also be like, well, of course, it, it, they lay it out so well that you are able to kind of go back and connect those dots pretty seamlessly. And uh, that's that's rare. I mean, that is really rare in, in TV. Sometimes people just go and go and then you're like, well, what about the, um, you know, flying dinosaur, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Where's that supposed to fit right? like, in? That, wasn't that there? Like, where did that go? But no, I think Dan and Holden did a really good job of tying all those things up. And I think they're gonna um, be very satisfied at the completion of the series. Well, thank you both so much. I'm really intrigued and I can't wait to watch some more. Great. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Good, great questions. Thank you.